The A320 has fire detection and extinguishing systems for the engines and APU, smoke detection in the avionics bay, smoke detection and fire extinguishing systems in the cargo compartments and lavatories, portable fire extinguishers for the flight compartment and the cabin. The engines and APU have individual fire detection systems. Each system consists of two identical detection loops, A and B, mounted in parallel, a fire detection unit, FDU, Each engine is equipped with two fire bottles. The discharge of the bottles is controlled by an associated push-button switch. The push-button switches are located on the fire panel on the overhead panel. For the APU, there is just one fire extinguisher bottle and only one discharge button. The guarded fire push-button switches provide fire indication and the means to isolate the corresponding system. The test buttons are used to test the respective fire detection and extinguishing system operation. In addition to the indications on the fire panel, there is a fire light for each engine on the engine panel located on the pedestal. These lights help identify which engine is on fire. There is also a fire light for the APU and a guarded APU shutoff switch located on the external power panel. For the avionics system, only smoke detection is provided. Its detector is located in the air extraction duct. The indications for avionic smoke are located on two panels in the cockpit. The emergency electric power panel, the ventilation panel. Lavatory smoke detection consists of one smoke detector in each lavatory linked to the smoke detection control unit, SDCU. In addition, each lavatory waste bin has an automatic fire extinguishing system. A total of six smoke detectors are installed in the cargo compartments. There are two detectors in the forward compartment, four in the aft compartment. Each detector is linked to one of two detection loops. The SDCU, Smoke Detection Control Unit, acquires signals sent by the detectors and sends them to the FWC for display in the cockpit. The aft cargo compartment on the A320 only is ventilated and heated for live animal carriage. Hot air is admitted through a trim air valve and the air is exhausted through an isolation valve. Activation of the smoke detection system causes these valves to close automatically. When activated by the smoke system, they cannot be overridden by the crew. On the overhead panel, there is a cargo smoke panel with the indications on cargo smoke. The system consists of the discharge nozzles and two fire bottles. The system is controlled through this panel. The panel contains red smoke warning lights for both bins, switches for controlling bottle discharge, agent discharge lights, a one-hour warning advising discharge of the second fire bottle. Two guarded discharge toggle switches control the bottles. Each switch position controls one squib, or discharge head, of each bottle.
When either the forward or aft switch is toggled upward, the Agent 1 position, the respective squib is triggered and the halon enters the respective compartment. When either the forward or aft switch is toggled downward, the Agent 2 position, the respective squib on bottle number 2 is triggered and the halon enters the respective compartment. The cargo smoke panel on the overhead panel has red smoke indicator lights. There are two guarded discharge switches and one fire bottle. Each switch controls one squib or discharge head of the bottle. When pushed, the fire bottle is emptied into the respective compartment. The extinguishing agent is discharged via one nozzle into the forward compartment or two nozzles into the aft compartment. Finally, there are portable fire extinguishers in the cockpit and the cabin. APU Fire Test Before you can perform this test, you have to make sure that the APU Fire Push Button switch is in and guarded. The agent light is extinguished. Perform the test. Push the APU Fire Test Push Button. The APU fire switch illuminates red and the squib and discharge lights illuminate. If AC power is available, the master warning lights and an APU fire warning on the ECAM are illuminated and the continuous repetitive chime CRC sounds. The APU fire bottle indicator, red disc, is checked during the walk around. The disc is an indication that the fire bottle has not been discharged. Note, there is no such indication for the engine fire bottles. Now perform the fire test for engine 1. Push the engine 1 fire system push button. Observe, the engine one fire push button switch illuminates red. Squib and discharge lights come on. The master warning light illuminates red. The CRC sounds. The engine one fire warning on the ECAM appears, and the fire light on the engine panel illuminates. On the EWD, the message Engine 1 Fire with the associated procedure is displayed. The illuminated fire push button switch on the fire panel and the fire light on the engine panel confirm this indication. The pilot flying maintains control of the aircraft and asks the pilot not flying to perform the ECAM actions. After confirmation from the pilot flying, the pilot not flying sets the thrust lever to idle. Engine 1 is spooling down, engine 2 is accelerating to compensate for the thrust loss. You now have exactly the same situation as for an engine failure, so the pilot flying sets thrust lever 2 to MCT.
Continue ECAM action. Place engine one master lever to the off position. After having switched engine one off, the after engine one shutdown procedure is shown on the EWD. Since the IP and HP valves close and the generator is no longer operating, air bleed and electrical are shown as secondary failures. Once the engine is shut down, you can fight the fire. First, you must lift the guard on the engine one fire push button. This item is not shown on the ECAM procedure. Lift the engine one fire push button guard. Now, push the engine one fire push button switch. When released, the fire push button switch arms the squibs shown by the white indications and closes fuel, hydraulic, bleed, and pack valves of engine one. For this reason, the hydraulic system is added to the secondary failure list. Simultaneously, an automatic countdown is started on the ECAM. This is to allow the engine to further slow down in order to increase the effectiveness of the agent. The next line of the ECAM procedure calls for the discharge of the fire extinguisher bottle. Go ahead and perform the ECAM action. The discharge light illuminates on the Agent 1 push button. This means that the fire extinguisher bottle is depressurized. It's now time to inform ATC. Since there is no feedback to the flight warning computer, this line will not disappear. All indications confirm that the fire is still burning. A second countdown now starts. This one is 30 seconds long in order to give the first agent enough response time. If at any time the fire stops, the engine one fire message will disappear. Agent one managed to extinguish the fire. The countdown for agent two has stopped. Notice, the engine one fire switch is no longer eliminated. The fire light on the engine panel is also extinguished. The engine fire procedure on the ECAM has disappeared. Land ASAP has changed from red to amber. Since the next steps are part of different chapters, we will stop here and proceed with the next failure. If one of the two fire detection loops of an engine fails, an ECAM message is triggered. After review and confirmation, clear engine. Because of the system redundancy, fire detection is still fully operational. Let's see what happens when you lose the second loop. Should both loops or the FDU be lost, fire detection is no longer available for the respective engine or the APU. Crew awareness and a close monitoring of the respective engine indications are now required. However, should both loops break within a five-second period, a valid fire warning is triggered. 